this up a little bit here. Um, it's wonderful to be with all of you out here in this beautiful, great outdoors at Slate Run Metro Park. It's beautiful, amen? Amen. amen. The weather is perfect here, and it's decorated up so nicely for celebration, celebration of Pentecost today. Today is the day we celebrate the ways in which the Holy Spirit moved in amazing ways at Pentecost many years ago. And we celebrate the ways in which the Holy Spirit is still at work in our lives today. If you are joining us on Facebook Live, um, please say hello in the chat. We'd love to interact with you. Um, I know that Jane Beatty is here and says hello to everyone. Um, and she's on the phone here too, listening in to make sure that she can be a part of the service here. We're glad that you are all here. If you've not received a copy of our bulletin and would like to be added to our mailing list, please send us an email at hopewellumcgrowthport at gmail.com. 
I want to invite you to um, listen to these words as a, as a way of, of centering ourselves today. I want to invite you to remember a time when your hopes and your dreams died. Not to bring things down. But to remember your feelings of despair and powerlessness for just a moment. And then remember your surprise when something stirred within with new seeds of hope sprouted forth. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of Pentecost to bring forth new life in all of us. I want to invite you now to be in prayer with Rachel. Please join me in the opening prayer. Lord, Lord we, we give thanks, thanks for this beautiful day. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Draw us near to you and to one another. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. to remember all the joys and concerns that are listed on our prayer list this week. Um, I also want to ask for, for prayers for Kim and for the Harrison Farm. We are unable to, to be there today. Um, and just keep, keep both of them in, in your thoughts and prayers. Are there other joys or concerns that you want to lift up today? Talbert has his boot off. That's an answer to our prayer. Kim? Uh, Sarah and Vinny are, um, both have COVID. This is their second time. Remember Sarah and Vinny are having COVID. For Which, a and Rachel, when the kids are down there, so that they can't see them for the second time in a year. Uh, <laughs> because of COVID. And so family that's there cannot all connect. How disappointing for everyone. Tracy? It's a joy and thanks to everyone who helped build the raised beds and they got it done really fast. <laughs> How many beds did we build yesterday for the Canal yeah. Winchester? Ten. 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 Ten beds in what, two hours? Yep. From the time we started building the first one to the time we ended up. One hour. One hour building time. Ten beds. Many hands make the, the work go quickly and it makes it easy for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I sent the pictures to my wife and she named us God's Carpenters for His People. It's a wonderful build. We had lots of help and just everything went very smooth and it was just great. Amen. And Tracy, and Kathy. Tracy and Kathy brought 
food, and we were dubbed God's carpenters for his people. I had, love that. That is beautiful. We had 18 there to help. 18 people helping. If you were there yesterday, raise your hand so we can give you a little bit of love. Let's give you all some love. Are there other joys or concerns you want to... Yeah. You want to make? Yeah. Uh, my friend Katie Burley, who helped her with physical therapy and lost her husband in December, they were in the middle of refurbishing her grandmother's house to break it up, and they got moved in with her and the kids. So, we need God's blessings. Yes, blessings for them and their new house and enjoy that they've been able to complete that project in the midst of struggles that they've experienced. Yes. I want to ask for travel mercies for my family um, this week and next week as we are on vacation. And ask for prayers for the pastors that will be preaching the next couple of weeks, Reverend Mimi Lubers, uh, Reverend Chip Koch, and um, also for Phyllis Fetzer, who will be filling in in case anyone um, has any pastoral care needs. So if you need to speak with a pastor, have someone pray with you, do a visit, um, please uh, contact her. Her information uh, is in the bullet. Tracy. And I just want to thank Raymond for coming out early and getting the shoulder yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Raymond. Yes, thank you for everyone who helped put this together today. It's a beautiful time to, to celebrate and to be in community with one another. Are there other joys or concerns you'd like to lift up? The Boso family, uh, their nine-year-old is in critical condition uh, with a heart issue, and she might need a heart transplant. Mm. <sighs> And did you say Bozo family? Mm -hmm. I've got another one. Yes. Uh, Steve was in a car accident this week, and the telephone pole came down right in the middle of the windshield and knocked the electric out around, and it could have been very bad, but <coughs> thankfully they were both okay. Yeah. So keep Steve in your prayers, but thank goodness he was not injured seriously in the accident, yes. I just want to give thanks for all who were able to end a school year safely uh, this year and just lift up the, the families that are um, are not able to say that um, and that are grieving the loss of their children. Let us pray. I'm going to adapt this prayer from Taylor Mayfield. Come, Holy Spirit. Continue to witness to us in our many languages. Speak in the language of our need. Let us hear how our deepest hungers, desires, and aspirations can be filled by your goodness. Speak in the language of our fear. Let us hear how our worries about the future, about each other, and about ourselves, about those in our community, our families and friends, can find rest in your care. Speak in the language of our gratitude, and we've lifted up many things for which we are thankful today. Let us hear how our honest thanks relates us not only to those with whom we live, but also to you, the Lord and giver of life, and indeed to the whole world. Speak to us in the language of hope. Let us hear how our deepest yearnings and our expectations are not just wishful thinking, but responses to your promise, O oh Lord. Speak to us the language of compassion that we might reach out to the world that's so hungry for compassion this day. Reach Lord, speak to us in the language of love, a language that is a verb that inspires us to go out and to connect with one another, O oh Lord, in this world's so need of unity. 
We pray this in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, perfect love. Amen. 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 And in the bulletin it says children's moment. He's going to have the children help tell our story today. And Olive said, uh, you need to have a few more than me to help you tell the story today. So, I'm not going to change my plan entirely, but I'm going to change it and invite you all to be a part of it. I actually have two stories today that I wanted to, to bring to you. And the first one is the Tower of Babel. And this may be familiar to some of you. It's from the Hebrew scriptures from Genesis 11. And there's a picture here of someone building a large tower. The whole world had only one language. The men said to each other, let's build a tower that reaches to the sky. We'll make a name for ourselves. Then we won't be scattered over the face of the whole earth. For God had said to them the same thing that God said to the disciples in the upper room. That Jesus said to his disciples, Go forth, go forth, multiply, go forth, make disciples, go to the ends of the earth. The same mission that God gives to us. But who were they glorifying? And this is where you get to respond. Who were they glorifying? Themselves. Yes, they want to make a name for themselves. Instead of glorifying God and speaking in a language that glorified God, they spoke in the language of me, myself, and I. But then the Lord came down to the city, the city, and the tower that the men were building. And the Lord said, all of them speak the same language. Now they'll be able to do anything they plan to do. Oh, do you think God doesn't want us to do things we like to plan to do? No. No. Let us mix up their language, and then they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. The Lord mixed up the language of the whole world there. That's why the city was named Babel. And as I think about this building of the tower, can we pretend like we're building the tower? Have a little fun? We get a little exercise in our shape? Move around a little bit? As I think about this building of the tower, who likes to build towers? I do. I still do. I like to build towers. It's fun to build structures and build things up. Some of you had fun building yesterday. I see some uh, hands pointed towards people that had fun building yesterday. Yes, we noticed that in those that were gathered yesterday. Likes to build things up. And God likes us to build things and create things like we did yesterday. But I'm going to ask all the kids in the room and the parents, when it's time to eat lunch, and it will be soon, is that a good time to be building the tower? No. When you're supposed to be on a mission to do something else, is that a good time to build the tower? Totally. Yeah. See, that's the problem. They weren't following God's mission. The timing wasn't right for what they were doing, and they were glorifying themselves. And we can do that as a church too. And now I'm going to start preaching and kind of mix it together. And then I'll let you off the hook for preaching later. Um, but as they were doing that, they were glorifying themselves. And we can do that too. We make these beds. Who do we glorify in the process? Do we claim that we are God's carpenters for God's people? Or do we say, man, we are the best church ever? <laughs> no, we, no we, we, we are a great church. Don't get me wrong. But who do we glorify in what we're doing? What is the language we are speaking? What is our witness to the world? That's part of what this story is saying. And these folks might have been filled with the, they might have been spiritual, 
They might have been very ritualistic in following their faith, but they weren't filled with the Spirit, spirit filled. And in contrast to that, I have another story. And today I just brought things from the children's Bible, so I hope that's all right with everyone. The coming of the Holy Spirit. So if we remember, the disciples were in Jerusalem. Jesus had left them and had promised them that the Spirit would come and they would know when it was time to go. So they had been waiting and anticipating. They'd been in the temple praying and preparing. And so this is coming from the Archbishop Desmond Tutu's Children of God Storybook Bible. The other one was the Read With Me Bible. And I'm going to take my little notes off of here. I know Kim can see it in the camera a little bit better that way. Um, the disciples were in Jerusalem, and they were all very excited. Can you all look very excited? <laughs> They could feel that something wonderful was about to happen. You know that kind of feeling? You're excited? Early one morning, whoosh, can we make sound like we're the wind? A strong wind blew through the room where they were gathered, and the house shook. Light, like tongues of fire, not tongues of fire, like tongues of fire rested on everyone's head and they felt the power of God's Holy Spirit inside them. Their hearts were filled with love and they began to talk. Can you think about that feeling all filled up inside? Can you remember what that feels like? Some of you I know are feeling that right now. All filled up with the Spirit of God, that love inside them. And they began to talk but they were talking in different languages. In Greek, in Latin, Egyptian, Libyan, and even Arabic. And I have to wonder about when you've been in a time when it's been really crowded. Like maybe you went to a pool party, like kids thinking about a pool party and the pool's full with people. And maybe the lifeguard's trying to give you a message. Can you even hear them? Sometimes. Not very easily, because there's so many voices going on. So it is amazing that they heard. They heard in a language that they understood. And at that time, Jerusalem was crowded with visitors from all over the world. When the people heard the noise of the wind, they all hurried to see what happened. The visitors were amazed to find the disciples speaking in so many different languages. Peter spoke to the crowd. What was prophesied has come true. God has made Jesus both our Savior and friend. Through him, God's wonderful dream is coming true. And the people had a question. What can we do to realize God's dream? Imagine people seeing us here and the wonderful community that we're building here and saying, what's going on there? Who are those folks having such a joyous time? And when they hear it's a church, maybe they like to say, what's your church like? How might we be a part of that? See, that's the community that's there. It's a community that draws people in. That's what the Spirit of God does. It draws us in to God and to one another. And Peter said to them, Return to God and be baptized and your sins will be forgiven. You will be given new life. And you too will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And 3,000 people were baptized that day. And that, my friends, is what we celebrate as Pentecost. Not the birth of the church, I would argue, because the birth happened in Bethlehem. But the launch of the church, where it really went forth in a new way. May we too experience a new launch of the church going out into the world and showing the Holy Spirit to others. That witness, the question
question that I've been asking myself and I'm going to ask you is what witness have you been this week? If people saw you and heard you, what is the witness that you have given to them? For when we witness things, we see things, we hear things, we experience it, and we share it. What will people share about us? And what has been your experience with the Holy Spirit this week? And so I, I asked this question at Bible study, of where have you seen the Spirit moving this week? And I have permission to share this story, and I won't get it as well as she told it, so you can call her up and hear the story directly from her, because that's the great thing. The witness and the stories of the Holy Spirit are ones that are worth repeating over and over again. We can learn new things from them. But Jane Brady was at Bible study, and she talked about going to the cemetery. She talked about going to the cemetery, and she saw that there was a new grave that was there. And she saw that there was someone there that was at the graveside reading their scriptures. And she saw this from a distance. If this person was there, I don't think she could actually see they were reading at the time. That she saw them from a distance. And she just felt compelled to go and talk with them. See, that's the Holy Spirit drawing us to other people. To go and talk with them. And she went and she found out he was reading his scriptures. And he said, you know, I haven't always read or followed um, the scriptures. But they were reading their Bible and they had lost a parent. And in that moment, she was able to connect with them and to show love and compassion for this person. And in doing that, she was filled with the Holy Spirit and felt the Spirit working in her and through her. Friends, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the language of love. It's a common language that we all have, whether we all speak the same kind of English or, or French or Spanish or whatever language you might speak. It's a common language that we speak, that language of love, of compassion. That's the language that draws people to us and draws us to God. And I wonder if anyone else has a story to share about the Holy Spirit working in your life this week. Anybody else want to share a witness like Jane did? Not yet? Well, as you have lunch today, I want you to think about that and to share your witnesses with that. I think about a spirit, I'll tell a very short story then, because I have a list of them I brought, but I'll tell one short story of, of my own, of, of um, interacting with, with someone. And it was, it was one of those days I was feeling a little bit cranky. Anybody have cranky days sometimes? <laughs> Sorry, I did. I wasn't feeling real great. It was a cranky day, and, and, and this gentleman that I was like, you know, I kind of just wanted to be in my own little space, my own little room. He says, come over here. And he wants me to sit down next to him on the bench that he's at. Come, come here. Pray with me. And I'm like, okay, I'm the pastor. I pray with people. I do this. I sat down, and I'm thinking he's going to say what he wants to, to pray, me to pray for. And he wants to hold my hand when we pray, which I often do with people. And he starts praying for me. <laughs> He starts praying for me. It wasn't about me sharing anything with him. He wanted to pray for me. He prayed for me in his native language, which I don't know what it was. I didn't understand the words he was saying. But I understood the spirit that he was sharing with me. And I walked away a lot less cranky than I had been. Because I could feel the joy of the Spirit in me. This joy of connecting with this person. The joy of the gift that they brought to me. The Holy Spirit that they presented again to me. And the Spirit presents itself over and over again to us. May we receive that Spirit. Amen. 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 And now let's sing, breathe on the breath of God. I'm thankful that we're not singing in different languages. <laughs> but it is a little hard to hear up here. Uh, could I get a volunteer or two to come?
walk up and sing it in my ear. <laughs> and the hope of new life. We haven't always been a good witness to your love. We haven't always been peacemakers or shown your love or grace. Sometimes we have messed things up. Forgive us. Hear us now in silence the confessions of your people. In the name of the risen Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Amen. I want you to take your communion elements in your hand if you don't have them there. And I want to uh, ask a blessing for them. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, your people, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make us lovers and tellers of your word. 
Make us peace wakers and healers and bestowers of your grace. And make us one body in Jesus Christ, now and for all time. All glory and honors is yours, almighty God. And we pray together as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we hold our elements, I invite you to remember the life and ministry of Jesus. How he healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with everyone, including the outcasts. And he preached forgiveness and peace. It was at this table that he issued an invitation to gather together, to share together, to remember together, and to go and to do likewise in the world. And on that night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He took the bread that was on the table, and we take the bread that we have. And he gave thanks to God. And he broke that bread, and he said, Take, eat, in remembrance of me. And they ate. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, the cup that was on the table, and we take the cups that are in our hands. And he gave thanks and he said to the disciples, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Easter people, let us raise our voices and proclaim the timeless truth. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for this holy sustenance and for feeding of our minds, bodies, and souls. We are ready for your spirit to lead us as we go forth as your witnesses, spreading hope, peace, and healing to all the world. In the name of perfect love, Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and is alive today. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to invite Carla up to recognize our graduates. All right, if I could have Cass, Zachary, and Rachel come up with me as well. So today we're going to honor our 2022 graduates and also our scholarship recipients. Um, so we have graduating this year, Cass Klein and she is graduating from Taze Valley High School. And uh, we also want to recognize uh, Rachel's graduation as well, and she wanted to say a couple words. I just wanted to thank everyone. I know I wasn't here at Hope Ball for all of my schooling, but I always felt supported by love and prayer um, that you all shared with cards, and I'm just so thankful for that support all the way through. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we're very honored to be able to provide scholarships this year for uh, Zachary Klein, who is attending Ohio Northern University, and also Kess Klein, who is going to be attending Capital University for music education. And so this year we were able to do $1,000 for each of them as a scholarship. Yay. And for Rachel and Kess, we wanted to give them 199 favorite Bible verses for graduates and also a cross necklace that says faith on it as well. So.
Carla. And now I want to invite us all to sing 10,000 Reasons with Mark. We've all sung this chorus uh, three times in a way. We had a little bit of an adaptation. Paul and I did on the ending the one time. Yeah, but uh, I was asked uh, two or three years ago after the service Pictures. why I didn't play the song all the way through. And I'm like, well, I don't really know why we haven't ever sang it all the way through. It's a nice song and uh, I like it. I'll try to do my best. I'm not for my best. To, Today. <laughs> we'll see what we can do here. Uh, so I want you to sing the chorus. And Kim uh, was nice enough to print the verses. So you want to sing the verses? That's fine with me. <laughs> announcements in the bulletin. I know that you all can read, 
and you will read those, and I trust that you will. I want to um, make you aware, though, that we are looking for volunteers for the food pantry in Asheville this week. Right? I got my dates right? Yes. Um, so if you can help on Thursday from 10.30 to 12.30 in Asheville, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. There is no Bible study. Um, we're taking a little pause for the month of June, but we'll be back in July online and want to invite everyone to join us with that. If you have Wi-Fi and a device, I can show you how to get on Zoom and you can join us. Um, are there other announcements that need to be lifted up today? Um, we did have a wonderful annual conference the last two days. I want to thank Carla for attending that on behalf of Hopewell. Um, there were lots of great things from that. There were recordings, I hope, of some of the, the witnesses that were there that I'd like to, to share with you over the coming months. There were lots of great testimonies given. Um, and one that thing I wanted to share with you, I know that um, we've talked about the support of the United Methodist Church in Ukraine and how we have United Methodist uh, churches in that area working with uh, with refugees and, and such. Um, it was announced at annual conference that Ohio Health has contributed fifty thousand dollars to this effort. So thank you to Ohio Health for that. Um, the churches that had come together and supporting that have uh, raised um, over a quarter of a million dollars that goes to UMCOR to our um, United Methodist uh, Committee on Relief that is, is there on the grounds helping to, to provide humanitarian aid to, to those that are there that have um, impacted by the violence and that are in the neighboring countries there. So that's something to celebrate, yes. Any, anything else you want to lift up? I want to ask a word of blessing for our food then. And dear Lord, we ask your blessing upon this food that we are about to eat. And we, we give thanks for all the hands that have touched it from seed to table, O oh Lord. We give thanks for those that have ordered our food and made sure that it is here for us this day. Please bless this food that it may nourish our bodies. Bless our conversations that they may nourish our souls and glorify you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 amen.